It's another beautiful Sunday afternoon. This is Robin Minds. Welcome. My name is Ebuka Obiuchi and thanks a lot for joining us. I uh, hope you had a good week. Um, the year is slowly winding down. A lot of us are excited and grateful to have seen uh, through 2020. Yes, we'll have a couple of weeks to go, but I mean, making it to the end of this year, what a year it has been. A lot of us are very grateful for that. But December is here, and December comes with a lot of activities, festivities, or what we like to call these days Dirty December, when um, every day seems to be either a party or a concert. I know this year seems a little more... Uh, tame than usual because of course um, we know what COVID has done and to the fact that uh, people can't necessarily gather uh, in, in mass uh, across the city or across the country but um, we have already started seeing posters and flyers of concerts holding across the, the, the state. Um, people have been partying whether we like it or not. And um, we're going to try and figure out today how uh, the country is going to cope with what seems to be a second wave. The federal government has ordered that isolation centers be reopened. We're seeing numbers across Europe and the U.S. Uh, spiking again. And there's fears that Nigeria would also sadly join that trend because a lot of people are also going to be returning from this, these other countries and joining what uh, is going to be a, a pretty hectic December uh, celebration here. So we're going to be talking with uh, some guests to help us hopefully navigate the waters of the of the dirty December. Hopefully we'll come out of it clean. I'm joined by Dr. Ugun Nayai Guilo, uh, who's a physician and a public health uh, consultant. Thanks for being here today. Can you hear me? A balancing act that can actually be done when it comes to, you know, people responding mm. to it. So there's actually a way around it. Okay. Can you, can you hear me, Ugun, Dr. Ugun Nayai Guilo? Can you hear me? Okay, let me let me try that again. I can see that my guests are having a bit of a conversation there. Uh, Dr. Ogunna, if you're there, can you hear me? Coming next. So, you know, on the side of... Okay. Okay, let's, we're trying to work on our connection, a uh, bit of a technical issue there. Uh, if Dr. Ogunna or Dr. Debola Lewis can hear me, um, how are you guys doing? I know you guys seem to have started the interview without me, uh, which is fine. I, I just want to and join in on the conversation. If you can hear me, how are you doing? Well, that's what you said now. Just explain the truth initially. Debola Lewis, can you hear me? This is Ebuka. I beg. I can't come and keep myself. Yeah, no, it's... it's a <laughs> okay, we're going to keep trying to get that connection uh, there. Debola Lewis, can you hear me? I can hear you, sir. Good afternoon. Okay. How are you? I've been trying to get your attention. You guys have been having a conversation without me. I I've been begging <laughs> and screaming from here. Um, how's everyone doing? Dr. Ogun, um, thanks for joining us today. Let me start with you. Um, we're talking uh, December and all of its drama and all of its issues. Uh, we know that we've had a hectic year with the pandemic. And uh, we're just trying to find out what are you seeing with regards to trends? Um, there's fears that Nigeria is going to be witnessing another spike or uh, a second wave like a lot of the you health workers have called it. Uh, how scared should Nigerians be or how cautious should we be with December, what we call dirty December? being around the corner okay. thank you very much again for having me and um, so not to scare nigerians i think it's more important that they be cautious in you know carrying out some of the precautions that have been said we, are, we understand that of course because of the prolonged nature of this pandemic it has a lot of people have suffered both personal social and even economic losses you know in nigeria we are like a congregate kind of we have a congregate kind of culture, you know, want to be together. And oftentimes, it's, it's like because of this pandemic, it comes with consequences. This um, COVID-19 thrives in congregate settings. So because it's primarily a respiratory virus, which means it, you, you, you get it through droplets from the nose, the mouth. So and of course, people get infected when the droplets enter through their nose, their mouth or the eyes. So oftentimes, you know, we want people to take, as I we always say, we emphasize the mask wearing, the hand hygiene, and all those, you know, necessary precautions. Because a lot of people have died from this. I know that, yes, we don't get to see them, but a lot of people have, and most of them are people's fathers, mothers, children. So most times, you know, our advice is, yes, we know that this pandemic has, has caused a lot of, you know, stress, for people, but we always, uh, we always encourage that try and limit at least during this period to maybe your family, and even if you have to go out to do any um, 
um, um, that's just be part of either a church service. Ensure that you know you're wearing your masks, you're practicing the hand hygiene, the respiratory etiquette, which means coughing or blowing into your nose. You know, and all those. And of course, if you feel ill, it's always good to stay back at home so that you don't expose those who are vulnerable as well. Right? Yeah. We should be able to enjoy yeah. the celebration without, you know, feeling as far as we we carry out those precautions. I think what I want to ask is uh, there it, seems to be a, a belief. I don't know whether it's a myth or whatever it is you can call it by Nigerians that um, mm -hmm. uh, COVID does not kill us or does not even necessarily affect us. There are people who believe because of how low the rates of infections and even lower the death rates is. I mean, we just crossed about 70,000 uh, infection rates officially uh, in Nigeria with other countries hitting the million. So there's a belief that it's not a big a deal here. Is that a myth? And if it isn't a myth, why are the rates so low here? What do we have that's working for us okay so there have been so many you know, opinions around why why are we not seeing the deaths and yes you know because we usually we, even though the there's the talk about how oh we're nigeria we've not been testing enough because it's possible that even the second spike we are seeing is because we had more people testing and of course we know we now because it's december you have more people coming in you have the domestic flights you have people coming in and leaving the country and you know having that within and outside travel but um at the same time one still has to um look at the the um so in terms of the those spikes definitely it, i know it has to do with the 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 travel then apart from that but in terms of myth yes we've we've had that talk that oh you know we are not dying from it but let's remember that there was there, in fact there, there have been serious there have been periods where we we're not testing enough so we've heard of cases of deaths but because we could not confirm whether they died from covid or not so we cannot be able to pinpoint that okay they died from they died of covid but of course remember the whole life of course there's also been the suggestion that nigeria is our demography is, a, is much younger than other countries. You know, in other countries, they are much older. That is in terms of the, the demographic profile of their countries. And we know that those who are often at risk of the severe forms of COVID-19 are those who, are, who, of course, have chronic illnesses, which we find, find in the older um, generation. And of course, those who are vulnerable, those who are, are vulnerable, like also the older, um, those who are older as well. So yes, we could say that our uh, our, demo our demography maybe is, has confessed some form of protection for us. But at the same time, that doesn't mean that the young ones are not at risk of contracting the virus. Okay. Let me go to you now, Debola Lewis. You are the CEO of uh, Yvent Couture. You guys um, uh, were one of the most hard hit, I want to believe, uh, through 2020. A lot of events couldn't hold. Um, but it looks like things have started picking up again. We're seeing pictures. We're seeing videos of weddings. Uh, a lot of weddings that were probably pushed back to the end of the year seem to be coming back again. There seem to be some restriction with numbers and all of that. But these days, it looks like things are almost back to normal. How much of a responsibility are event um, uh, organizers uh, taking with regards to the fact that this pandemic is still literally killing people? And what are your thoughts on the fact that certain concerts are even going to hold in December? Okay. Um, well, with the concerts, I'm not very much aware of a lot of concerts. Um, to my knowledge, I've not heard of so much concerts. But for events in general, uh, the weddings, the social events, we as um, event designers, event planners, and you know, and the likes of us, what we've done is to try and sensitize, you know, the host, the celebrant, as much as possible, on enforcing um, social distancing with their events. You know, the, the number of events. Most times, the um, what you see on social media is one angle. So, for example, you see people partying. Probably it's really not about more than maybe a 50 or 100 people in that party. But, you know, with the picture angle and all that, it looks like a lot of people. Although there's some that are taking the risk. But we are trying our best possible to um, sensitize and, um, let me use the word, vehemently um, and ensure that clients, you know, follow safety protocols. Most times at events now, at the entrance, you have the disinfecting um, tunnel. You know, you go through it, it disinfects you. Um, in the numbering of, um, in the spacing of tables, chairs and tables, you know, we give considerable space. Venues are reduced to most, most of them, even less than half capacity. You know, so those are the, you know, the measures we try to take. And everybody's, of course, maxed up. Um, there's sanitizers, even in gift packs, there's sanitizers, there's face masks. So the 
consciousness is still there, the awareness is still there. So we just keep it rolling that way. And we hope people take responsibility and then um, people behave responsibly. That's the word. Yes. Yeah, I think that's what my question is now, because we find that a lot of these events, you know, at the door, yes, there's uh, people are wearing their masks, they go in. But I mean, you get into the event, an hour, two hours into it, people have had a bit to drink, uh, the music has gotten into the body, and then you realize that there isn't that much of a, of a regulation going on anymore. Um, that, which is why I'm asking, how do you, what do you find happens? Do you find that people are becoming a little less uh, careful with this? Do you feel the responsibility to do this? Or have you, has it gotten to a point where you just sensitize and let people just take responsibility for themselves? Okay, so um, let me try and answer a bit sincerely <laughs> and a bit, um, you know, like I just learned from, I told you now, there's a term called pandemic fatigue. I never knew that before. <laughs> Even I think I'm suffering from that whereby, you know, you've gone through it for a long time and then you don't even care the consequences anymore. So that comes also, you know, that can happen. But what we try to do, like I said again, we can't really enforce. And don't forget, we are hired. You know, we are not um, the government. So we, we, we try as much as possible to just sensitize, basically. Then again, if events are intimate, you know, um, the gatherings are smaller, um, contract tracing is easier, then by and large, um, those that come know each other. So it's okay to relax around them. It's like friends and family, close friends. So yes, they might want to relax a little bit around themselves. The problem might be when it's a larger gathering. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Let me go back to you now, Dr. Aguilo, and I want to talk about um, you know, the after effects of all this. Because uh, what, what we see that happened in Europe, uh, that happened in the United States, came from you know, a backlog of people having a fun summer. People got almost careless after the lockdown was lifted around July. They went to beaches and just were partying. And after the summer was over, we started seeing the numbers spike again. That is the fear with Nigeria that January, February, we're going to see the after effects of this, especially with what people said started off with the protests to where there were a lot of crowded people, crowded uh, people in crowded places together. Um, the vaccine, yes, there's talks about a vaccine coming in eventually, and we don't know when Nigeria is at, on that on the queue for that. Um, what do you see happening after this uh, with knowing that, I mean, this December seems a little tamer than usual, but a lot of things are still going to happen anyways. Okay, thank you very much. So because the, this, this virus definitely is respiratory, so we know that if, we do, if those precautions are not, are not taken, like the masking, the physical distancing, it's inevitable. People would come down with it. And of course, we are seeing the influx of people coming in to celebrate you're seeing that, like I earlier, like I had been discussing, you know, the fatigue that comes with the long-term pandemic that had been ongoing. People are no longer interested, so they are looking at, oh, what are perceived risks, and versus, oh, how much will I lose in terms of my partying, the money I'll have to make. So people would just rather go with, so they'll just rather not, just want to be comfortable. So. Um, definitely, we're going to see those spikes. So I think what we should now be cautious about is that we want to encourage people to self-monitor. There's something we call self-monitor. So you just look out for any signs. If you're having cough, if you're having cat, if you notice any fever. And most times, you know, if you've been taking... Because I know in Nigeria, we commonly like to self-medicate. But most times, we advise that at least you contact a doctor. Because, you know, because there's an ongoing pandemic, our index of suspicion is very high. You know, when some, someone comes with a high fever, a cough. So it's very important because it's inevitable especially if one has not been following those precautionary measures. So I think the best, and we're hoping that, I think the vaccine is supposed to come in by next year. We don't know that yet. And it's not, not everyone would even be, would have, would be able to get that vaccine. But Nigeria only has access to 20% of it. So I think the best bet for us is to take these public health, social measures very, very importantly. I think that's just the only thing we can do now and hope that we self-monitor. At least we, we are seeing, you know, the talk of opening, reopening the uh, isolation centers that were initially closed. So we're trying to, you know, that is trying to be set up. So that at least people are, we are hoping that when people notice that they have symptoms, they're coming on time so that they don't expose other family members. And that now causes contact, tra that's contact tracing of their own, con that's tracing of their contacts more difficult. I think that's do the you, best we can do. Yeah, I you, hope you, that, you know, Nigerians will listen. 
You, you talk there about, you know, pandemic fatigue. I think what is even crazier for a lot of people is the lockdown fatigue. Uh, but a lot of countries have gone into a second lockdown. We saw some of the largest spikes in the United States after the Thanksgiving uh, celebrations happened. Uh, a lot of traveling and families getting together, which is what our Christmas celebrations are here. Um, do you see a second lockdown coming? I mean, we're having government officials also testing positive. The Lagos State governor uh, apparently has tested positive uh, for COVID. Do you think there might be a lockdown in the new year? Um, I don't think so. In fact, usually for, for low-income countries, we usually don't encourage it. Like, I know a lockdown would have worked, especially if we have, like, a an existing social welfare system where all those who are, like, you know, at those who are vulnerable will be protected. But because we have a higher number of, of daily income earners, you know, you don't want to do a lockdown where you're going to have them. So the consequences of that lockdown will be worse for them than just... So basically, like, we saw what happened the last time. You know, we were seeing spikes in things like malnutrition, things like you know, our childhood mortality rate just spiked up. So I don't, I, I don't know about the, I don't know about the lockdown, but I know that it's not something we want to. Especially given the, you know, the the state of our economy and looking yes. at, the, you know, our low the the percentage of our daily earners, our daily income earners, we don't want to further impoverish them okay. or make them suffer. Let me go back to Debola now. Uh, Debola, what sort of events are you seeing? Are you getting inquiries for the most over this, this period? I know usually, like I said, it will be concerts and day parties and all of that. How different is it this year? What sort of events are you getting inquiries for? Or bookings? Very different. All intimate All intimate. Um, 20 guests, um, 30 guests, private parties. All intimate events. Yeah. But uh, how frequent are they, though? Well, um, now it's getting more frequent because, again, um, I think everybody's tired of not being able to socialize. Um, everybody believes, you know, it um, has calmed down or the pandemic is over. In fact, in, sometimes in conversation, you hear people say, um, you know, uh, now that COVID is over. <laughs> I'm like, Are you sure? <laughs> so, um, yeah, people believe that it's calmer now, save for the recent um, spike. But all intimate events, and I think that's going to be around for a while, yeah. you know. So, I mean, as intimate as they are, like I said, I mean, we still have a couple of weddings, especially weddings, because with weddings, uh, it's harder to limit numbers because we know how our family, our extended family unit works here in Nigeria. Um, what are you, as a company now, as a brand with your own company, what are you working with in December going forward, especially because there's fears that by January we'll see the results of all of this? So what we've done is, um, what we're doing, um, like, and then again, by intimate, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Go on. Can you so by intimate, don't forget, a typical event in Nigeria, a typical wedding is about 1,000 guests. That's a normal wedding. You know, a small wedding is about 500 guests. So now um, we have like 100, max 50. So that's, you know, that's the relative um, um, figure to it. Yeah. So what we're doing is you know, we try to, like, when we work, we try to definitely our mask up. Um, everybody has sanitizers. Um, now, normally we set up an event just like a night before the event. But now um, we ask for more time so we can set up and have a clear, um, almost enough hours for disinfection before guests come in, you know, and things like that. And um, just try to keep safe, you know, with ourselves. That's for the company, but then for um, for the host, well, we are not always there when the party starts. So you know that way. Well, thank you very much. I guess uh, the message here is just to all Nigerians to realize that uh, their fate is in their hands. As much as uh, we are being told what to do, we also need to take responsibility for ourselves. And uh, hopefully we all get through this year and start a fresh year uh, safe and healthy. Thanks for joining us, uh, Debola Nugrona. We'll take a break now and be right back. Thank Please you. don't go away.